Nice. Okay. Welcome. 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 Hey, Harry. How are you doing? Yeah, doing well. Thanks, Sebastian. So, welcome everybody to Harry and Seb Talks. This is our weekly podcast that we do on Fridays, where we talk about just about anything in regards to agency life, web flow, marketing, um, and all that, that other great stuff. Uh, we were talking loads before we hit record, so I, I very anxiously said. Sebastian, shall we shall we go rec hit record? <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, we now have. Um, we were talking about processes and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, uh, Sebastian has no idea what the topic is this week, but I do, thankfully. Um, yeah, um, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I thought what would be fun this week is for everybody to find out a little bit more about who we are and who Sebastian Bayer is. Because I did a great uh, podcast with Emily from the Great Design Lead last week. Okay. And she started off by, uh, yeah, chat, just chatting about um, who we were and what we do. So, Sebastian, I want you to think back a little bit to um, your, your childhood, because I know that you grew up in Germany. Um, uh, yeah, that's right. Um, grew up in Germany in a small village mm -hmm. called Schmalnau. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. I think six, six, seven hundred inhabitants. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So really small. Went there to primary school and then like stayed, stayed there mainly. Um, I don't know what else do you want to know about? <laughs> like, well, it's grew, interesting. Grew up in a small, in a small, a small village where I, I'm, the others know you you know each other everybody knows mm -hmm. each other also grew up in clubs like i was um, in a football club started to play soccer when i was i think four years old mm -hmm. and also played in the music club like yeah. kind of like trumpet yeah, yeah. bigger like a horn which also shaped like me from the beginning you know when um when did you realize you were an entrepreneur Ah, <laughs> I think, how old was I? Let me think. I think we were seven years. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Seven years. Um, we just, um, one of my friends, Andre, he got his first um, PC from mm -hmm. Aldi mm -hmm. with Windows 95. Wow, okay. Old and school, I he like also it. got an old printer. And yeah. our idea was, hey, we need to make a magazine and we're going to sell it. <laughs> so we came up with this animal magazine, which we wanted to bring out monthly. We printed it out. We designed like it was the animal of the month. We got some recipes in it and things like this. Yeah. And then we printed out, I think we printed out 20 magazines. Mm -hmm. And then we went from house to house to sell it for wow. um, around two, two mark, which is a, one euro or something or one euro 50. Uh -huh. And we wanted to sell them already in abonnement for the entire year. So that was that was the start of this entrepreneurship where we were starting to sell um, kind of animal magazines. Did you um did you manage to sell any? Of course we sold some. Yes. They know us, so <laughs> they were were nice. And yeah. another funny thing we did, which my parents didn't like so much. Um, so we had a supermarket in the center of um, Schmalnau where everybody was going. And we were like, how cool would it be? Because we, after school, we don't know what to do. So mm. if we offer them like a service that we can take out the dog for a walk or we can do the garden and so on. And we put a paper mm -hmm. there where we said, hey, this is our um, lightning service. We call it lightning service and give them some examples what we can do. We can do grocery shopping and other things. And we wrote the phone number of my parents on it. Oh, crikey. So I was, I think, I don't know how old I was. I think 10 years old or 11. Uh -huh. So then strangers called my parents at nine, nine o'clock in the evening. I was already sleeping. Hey, can you go out with my dog? I, uh -huh. oh, no, what do you want? And then another <laughs> call. Could you do the garden for me? And no, I didn't know what's going on. So they asked me and I told them, yeah, we have this new service. Where we... Mm -hmm. <laughs> So that was the start, I think, from my entrepreneurship to think already outside of the box, you know. And um, why don't you why don't you tell the viewers about where you went 
for your career? Because a lot of people would think Sebastian and his friend doing uh, entrepreneur stuff, but you went into kind of like a different career before you became an entrepreneur f- f- uh, officially, right? Yes, yes. Um, I first, after school, I decided to make, first I was really excited about military. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to military and my dad and my mom, of course, weren't so happy about this. Thrilled, yeah. (laughs) They weren't so thrilled, yeah. And my dad worked at this time at telecom. So my dad, you have to imagine a civil servant working. He started to work at telecom when he was 16 years old. Mm-hmm. until he retired with um, around 60 years. Mm-hmm. So his entire life, he worked in one company, which is crazy. So he was like, no, no, no. Um, I will try to get you to telecom. So I wrote a CV and it was with IT. And at this time, I was already really into IT, but mainly playing Counter-Strike and things like this, you know. Mm-hmm. And at the end, it worked out. I started um, a three-year training as an IT businessman. At Deutsche yep. Telekom. So I was running through several departments in order to learn there, you know. Mm-hmm. I did it a bit shorter the training because I wanted to finish earlier, so two and a half years. After that, I went in a call center from Telekom. That was at that time the rule that everybody that finished the training needs to go in a call center for one year. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I had some good connections. I got out a bit earlier. It sounds like after, prison almost. After <laughs> after eight months, I learned a lot. I learned a lot <laughs> there, especially about sales. I had mm. um, Telecom has really good trainings regarding sales, and at this time, their iPhone came out, so you needed to sell iPhones, iPhones, iPhones every oh, time. Nice, iPhones. nice, nice. And <laughs> it was luckily inbound calls, so the people came with a problem, and then you, on top of this, you try to sell them did an upsell or something. So I learned a lot about sales, which was cool, mm. and. After that, I went also at Telecom and started a career in IT security, data privacy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I stayed there for, let me think, almost, uh, I think 10 years. Yeah, 10 years I worked there. Um, besides this, I was starting already something when I was in this call center regarding sports nutrition. Mm-hmm. So I was starting with a friend, a sports nutrition shop. And that's that's where my other question was going to come okay. in because between between you being an entrepreneur as a kid and like doing it in your in your teens and stuff yeah. and then go, going and working for a really corporate company did you ever did you ever miss being an entrepreneur did you ever miss uh that kind of like freedom i guess of being able to sell and buy stuff um I, I think the main the main issue is and that lots of people that want to start their own business have they are in this wheel. Mm. And for example, in this call center, I had once to work in the morning, in the evening, during the night sometimes. And of course, you know you want to do something outside to want to break out, as you said, like a prison, kind of like you want to break out. Yeah. And but I think you you are so busy you don't you forget to miss it you know mm. if you then back into it you are really you are really um, engaged and you are excited again to be back back in it and for me that was with the sports nutrition thing mm-hmm. so this shop was really close to this call center so after I was working there I went there and that was for me like I enjoyed it, it was fun to make the online shop and so on and that's how I got into this online marketing field the first time you know Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah because i remember when like uh i was working for uh, a company an agency and that kind of got me the buzz of being an entrepreneur i'd done some stuff as a kid as well but um that gave me a real sense of like yeah i I enjoy working for myself i enjoy doing my own thing and i remember i remember going home and working for a hotel and just being like, this fucking sucks. I have to, I have to manage my, own, I, I want to manage my own time. I want to do my own thing. Um, and I, I just had like a, a point where I was like, oh, wow, I, I, I need to quit. I need to go do my own thing now. And was there, was there something similar for you like that with, with telecom? Did, was there a point what, where you were like... What we, what we skipped and what I didn't mention was um, I started early to work. 
So mm -hmm. I was like, at one point I wanted to buy my own stuff and my uh, pocket money was too little. So I was, when I was 14, I started my first vacation job mm -hmm. in uh, laundry. And from there on, I went to work in a bakery. I went to work in logistics. I went in the iron fabric. So I had eight, eight vacation jobs. I worked every year at another thing. So I have lots sure, of experience sure. in lots of fields, <laughs> which was for me, like it showed me which job I don't want to do in the future. <laughs> but I was always fascinated of these companies. How do they work? And especially of the, of the CEO that was leading the company. Yeah what style they had and so on. And that was really like, um, got me more interested in how do I set up a company from scratch? How do I build a company? How do I lead people? And I was questioning lots of things in these companies and these workers, they were, I don't know, they didn't pay attention. They worked so long there, they didn't think about it. And that, that got me more interested in this, you know? Yeah, very nice, very nice. So, and I'm just trying to think, um, I guess like from there, then you set up your nutrition business with your friend, right? And that got you into online marketing. Yes. Then I met from my cousin, the, mm -hmm. the new boyfriend, which was Ronald. And he was working on online marketing. He was working at that time for, uh, I think they were the biggest online marketing agency in Fulda, which is the closest city. Mm -hmm. and he was managing their Google ads campaigns, which was mm -hmm. kind of like new at this, at that time. And it was really complex, not like, like now it wasn't so easy to set up a campaign and to let it run successfully. And he was also, he, I think he had a fight with someone there and then he decided to make his own agency. Okay. And that's how we decided, Hey, because I was more in e-commerce regarding spot nutrition. That's how we decided we set up two companies. RE7 Consulting and Commerce Solution. Mm -hmm. And that was the first step in real entrepreneurship. And of course, we did so many mistakes. <laughs> you, have, you have no idea we did so many can mistakes. You, can you remember any of the, any of the big ones, any of the big uh, it lessons? Started, it started with the funny part that Ronald was doing his project managing on a cannon, like this size. <laughs> so we wow. didn't have any tool. He was just writing the customers there and what needs to be done. Um, Mainly thing, I don't know, that was also hunting me in Bucharest with the tax accountant. Somehow mm -hmm. with the tax accountant, this is really important when you start a business to have a tax accountant that you can trust and um, is like consulting you really well. So that mm -hmm. was that was a big thing that, that I learned during this time. There were things like we didn't have a contract. There were things like we asked not uh, upfront with the payment of the money, like an advance payment. Lots, lo yeah. lots of things. We didn't agree how many changes we had because at the time we also started to do already like web development projects and so on, mm -hmm. or online shops. Mm -hmm. And I remember we had this one online shop regarding wooden toys. Nightmare. <laughs> I was working in nights with Magento, was the online shop. And we, we did a really cool shop, but mm -hmm. we, I don't know, we put 300 hours in it, at least maybe even more. And um, we agreed to 120 hours, something like this. Wow. Yes, that was a big, big lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, that's a real big one, like managing your time and making sure, and something we're still trying to get better at yeah. is like making sure that your, the amount of work you're putting in, you're paying, being paid for that equal amount and also you're charging profit on top because sometimes we forget that you're meant to then charge also, you know, 20 or 30% so that you actually make money yep. on top of the hours that you do, right? Um, and even with the hours, I, I'm not a big fan of selling hours. I, I sell more like a fixed fixed amount. Mm -hmm. And um, with the hours also too cheap from the beginning, like to underestimate the price and don't see what's behind us with the taxes and other things. In Germany, mm -hmm. taxes are quite high. so. Mm -hmm. We had like lots of money for us, 10,000 euros or 20,000. And then the finance ministry came because <laughs> they just take it. They just take it from your account. There is no, <laughs> there is no, you have to pay until then. No, they just take it. Take it straight away. <laughs> yes. And if you, if they don't take it, then you get directly something from yeah. them. Like, Hey, now mm. you pay more. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
were there um were there any points in the early stages of your agency where you felt like you wanted to give up or there was a point where you were like you know this is too much stress and hassle um i was not fully involved at the beginning i mean ronald was the one with the, another company that left us that were fully involved i was mm. doing it only part-time i was still working at telecom because i had a really good salary yeah and true. um so i i don't think we had this but there were lots of struggles with some customers and like drawbacks and things where you were like oh fuck can you what remember you now? any of them specifically like like a big client didn't pay this invoice or when i think one client went in in uh, bankrupt oh and it God. was an invoice of eight thousand euros which was one of our biggest invoices that we had and we mm. were like uh how do we supposed to solve it um i mean for me i had still my security with telecom so i was given i think i gave also credit I, i'm not sure anymore mm -hmm. anyway um so for my friends that was really hard and i think we had then also some employers which we needed to pay and that was mm. the hardest part so we we had to put our own money in the company in order to pay them or we had to wait sometimes for to pay our salaries out after three five six months wow. which which was like the norm at this time. And I remember in Romania, um, there were certain points where I was like almost saying, oh no, I can't, I can't do this anymore, frustrated and so on. So I, I think everybody has this. Mm -hmm. So you were working at Telecom part-time um, and you were working in the agency part-time, but Telecom was taking up most of your time. And then yeah. how did you go from telecom to full-time agency? Um, I can also say I, because I did telecom, I did the agency. And then I was like, oh, I want to learn more about um, economics. Mm -hmm. So I started a full-time study in international business administration. So right. I was doing at one point three things at the same time, wow. 20, 24 hour, uh, 20, 20 hours or 20, yeah, 20 hours telecom, then RE7 and also full-time full study. Don't ask me how mm. I did it, just did <laughs> it. Because um, for me, it was important to understand the economics behind the business in order mm -hmm. to get better with finances. And then in, let me think, then I went to Romania in 2015 because I had also to study abroad. That got me to Romania. And then I saw the opportunity for us to set up another agency here. Mm -hmm. 2016 moved here. So you have to imagine I took my old Passat, put everything in my trunk, drove 17 or 18 hours down <laughs> to Romania and started here. No, no word. Uh -huh. I, I wasn't able to speak Romanian. So was lucky I got Alexandra as business partner there from the beginning and from there we started from scratch to build up the business how um nerve-wracking was it getting into a car and driving down to romania knowing you were leaving all your friends and family and 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 your own language and culture behind and you were going to i mean i was there in romania before i lived there half a year because of the telecom thing experience and um I, you know, I had always this dream. I wanted to work in another country to have my own thing in another country. So, and, and I'm not out of the world. It's like two hours flight to Germany. Mm. And for me, there was lots of excitement, you know, um, of course, with the car, we were, I, I had several, uh, two stops or one stop I had when I was going there to sleep overnight, but for me, it was an adventure. Yeah. I like that. Um, but with setting up the agency and Romania is not so digitalized like Germany. And I would say Germany is also not digitalized. So you have to imagine when they showed me, yes, you need to have the stamp. So every document to sign, you need to put a stamp here. <laughs> and when you sign contracts, you need to sign on every page, even on the pages that are empty. And I, sounds... I was like, what, what the fuck is going on? It's just like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's from communism. They don't trust them. Yeah, yeah. They don't trust each other. So I think it's something left from communism that you have to sign every page. Yeah. And with this, with the stamp that was, 
gravy. Amazing. I um <clears throat> I can only relate with uh, having traveled to Bulgaria recently and um, it being very uh, communist still. Like you don't go out uh, driving past nine o'clock, for example. There's a, there isn't a curfew, so to speak, but there's an un unspoken curfew where you just don't go out because the police will pull you over if wow. you're out past nine o'clock and um i think like yeah there's uh still some of these like little things that are left over that are um inside the culture um did you find it was very hard to set up a digital agency in a culture that perhaps isn't very digital what do you mean a culture um in terms of like uh their structure isn't very digital it it, um, it must have been um, quite paper-based yes, still yes, back in yes 2016. it was really it was really time consuming you know it was really time consuming you had to go to all sort of departments i needed to have a person with me that translated me the things and then sometimes they were saying yeah but you can't do this now because you don't speak romanian you need a translator so i needed a translator and romanians love notaries so for every every change you want to do at your company, you need to go to the notary and the notary will always tell you, yeah, you are German, you need a translator. So you need to pay the notary, you need to pay the translator <laughs> oh, and you need to give them this. And it, it, they want so many, they want so many identification things. Now, now I know my ID from my, from my identity card by heart because <laughs> they always write them in the contract. It's, 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 it's insane. And um, also with the invoices, for example, mm -hmm. what is crazy with the invoices when we do invoice in Romania, um, the, 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 the numbers, so of course the numbers need to count up, yeah. but also with the dates. So when I have an invoice from uh, invoice number one and it's from today and I make an invoice number two and I make it from yesterday, this is not okay. The date needs to be now tomorrow or today. So it's quite it's quite the quite the laborious task <laughs> it needs to say yes also from organization point of view so there are lots of things where i'm like I just can't be serious or <laughs> I'd rather how be back to in... get how to get a vat id a, a vat id this is with yeah. the with the tax accountant with the tax accountant we had there it took us 90 days to get a no. i don't say it but to get just a <laughs> vat id because this dude didn't know what he was doing he was charging mm. us a lot and with a new tax accountant took us a few days and we had it nice so um actually then so you, you went just to recap where we are in your journey so you came, went from germany to uh to romania and uh for the guys who didn't hear or, or don't know sebastian met his now business partner um uh why is her name completely left my alexandra head? alexandra there we go thank you so you met alexandra how critical was it to have alexandra as a business partner in the first few months of setting up an agency in romania crucial crucial mm. because you have to imagine i i wasn't able to speak the language of course i i speak english but when you go through the authorities and so on um you need somebody that speaks the language mm. and that you can trust and I, I was really lucky that she stayed until now in, in the agency, of course, first as an employee, later then as a business partner, like as a shareholder. Mm -hmm. But um, I think without um, somebody, also Bogdan was at this beginning close by, so they, they had a lot that mm. this entire thing was working, but it was like, I, I think they both thought this guy is on a suicide mission. This will never, <laughs> this will never work out. <laughs> how um, how much would you say your relationship with Alexandra was built on trust and her belief in growing the company? And how much do you think it was just like I, I'm an I'm an employee and I'm just going to work and then I'm going to go home? Like, did she show that she wanted? the company to grow and that's why you offered her a partnership i i remember when we met she also said she spoke a bit german <laughs> and i know that she came from another company regarding um den dentist or something mm -hmm, so she mm -hmm. was somehow already working as kind of like a freelancer what i understood like um so she 
she know the the drill yeah and um when she started then to work with me um i i think from the beginning on she knew that she has more responsibilities than an employee mm. and um also for her there was you you could you could call her on the weekend you could call her in the evening morning she would pick up the phone and help you with things Amazing. not what you expect from a normal emp- employee you know mm-hmm. and of course she started from the beginning so you get also attached to the company and to the thing there were things when she doubted that this entire thing were going to work you, for example with the salaries when yeah. we couldn't pay the salaries and so on mm-hmm. and um but what what can i say i i'm a trustworthy guy <laughs> <laughs> at the end at the end and the end worked out but um also because i'm grateful and um she brought so much value to the company it was only the logical um conclusion so, yeah. to mm. to um give her some shares to the company mm. that she will be a shareholder of the company and to grow together with this company because she is from the beginning there she has she has this drive and she manages the team and the project management mm. she has so much knowledge and so much energy when she speaks about social media marketing um when the, when she goes to the classic class i'm like wow amazing <laughs> so um you got you you two must be quite quite close then now that uh she's like part of the management team of the company of course of course also um we meet on the weekend la- last we can for example we met had a discussion about the next steps for re7 and we need to trust each other this is yeah. this is like you have to imagine when you when you have a business with a business partner it's almost more than you are married in a way sure. because sure. you you need to trust each other it's the same if you want to break up you you just can't break up because the company is still there and things like this so you need really somebody that you can trust mm and that that works well especially with the communication there's no hiding or something we are transparent to each other and this this is important for for a business to work and also with the employees i was going to ask you um like most good couples good couples fight and argue and get get over it would you say that uh you and alexandra uh argue about things do you do you generally disagree and like have good discussions we I don't think we ever had really big like fights or something. Mm-hmm. I mean somebody is upset which is which is normal but um we both we both are able to talk normally to each other and respect each other because if it comes then to yelling each other or something and so most most of the time there are communication problems and when we have like um, a disagreement we we discuss it we come to a conclusion and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's that's really important you come to a conclusion and sometimes you say yeah we didn't come to a conclusion then we don't do it in this way at all yeah yeah i think that's so important like when you're working with other people is like validating them so letting them have their opinion and not just squashing on it and having like a really critical and and good discussion where you actually discuss about the problem and you, you actually give it some time and some space to be talked about. Whereas like, I think poor management is where they just say, no, your opinion's wrong and we're not going to move forward yep. with that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so important, especially also with, with employees, um, communication, transparency, also with the clients, be transparent with the clients that got us so many happy clients, um, that we are transparent with them. And when something doesn't work out, we tell them, Hey, that's why we weren't able to do things and so on. It's better than you, than you ghost, now not ghost them, but if you don't message them anything, mm-hmm. especially when, when you are not having sales or something, you need to keep mm-hmm. them in the loop. You need to tell them that you are doing something so that they know that they know, okay, they are not staying there and doing this you know and waiting what's happening no they they are active doing something for you and your business sure sure. so you um you and alexandra set up the company uh i think you said you got you had bogdan as well another guy helping you out um with stuff when was it when did it get to the point where you were like okay wow like the agency is doing well now and like 
I'm happy with with it, and I think I think that we can give this a shot. Like I think this is going to work. <laughs> I think that I'm saying it's really going well since last year. Mm -hmm. Um, where where I'm like, wow, now now it's going. Especially when we when we when we hired uh, Laura, our sales manager, mm -hmm. and we got more sales. I was like, yeah, now now it's going to to work, to run. Mm -hmm. um that was the thing where i was like really happy I, be before we had already some things for example when we moved first to to our office mm -hmm. that was the first first big step when well, we moved just, out from my kitchen i was about to say can you tell, <laughs> let everybody know that yeah re7 was run out of your kitchen for a while right first it was run by i mean we didn't have an office so we were just meeting up then once per week in starbucks in no, no, at Oniri nice. at the main boulevard in Bucharest. And then we were working from my kitchen. So I mm -hmm. had a big I IKEA table and we were working with five people from the table. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> then we moved in my living room. And then at one point we were like, okay, we now need to find an office. We got into an office and that was that was the next big step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where it felt, did it feel real at that point once you moved into an office and you were out of your kitchen? Yeah, and I had also the comparison to the German company, you know, when we were really early going into an office mm. at, at the German company and here it took a bit longer, but nevertheless, um, it you saw the thing, the baby is running, you know, it's like finally, finally we are growing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got RE7 consulting on the wall. You have like your own office exactly. and stuff. Like, yeah, this, oh, yeah, this small thing, the small <laughs> thing, like you have this at the wall or just to have like something in orange, it doesn't cost much, but it feels like more like you are, you're having a company, you have your own company. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think we're going to, we're going to get imaginary space uh, hoodies or something at some point to help us feel a bit more. Yeah, good. But e even pens, right? Like that would help. It would trick, it would not trick your mind, but it makes you feel... Legit. Yes, or just we we got here these mugs from IKEA, you know. Nice. <laughs> it's not nothing special. It's just an orange mug, but um, to to be reminded of this color and so mm. on. And for um, if we were thinking a bit more like we've spoken about the past and we've spoken about the present, I'd love to finish off by f talking a bit about the future. And for you, Sebastian, what's your goal for RE Seven? For RE7, um, I wrote a vision about RE7. So uh, there's there's a clear goal um, for RE7. Um, I wrote a vision for 2020, let me think, 2024. Mm -hmm. So um, of course we are going to grow. Um, we will increase our employees. We will buy our own office close mm -hmm. to the, close here to the big park mm -hmm. that we have. For the employees, I can't remember i think it was around 40 employees that we will have at that time mm -hmm. and we will work in pots so we are not working in teams anymore we have pots like we have an e-commerce pot where for example we have specialists that are um, like for facebook e-commerce for um, google e-commerce google ads e-commerce we have the project manager the content team so these are working all in pots so that we have for each industry that we are serving, automotive, real estate, e-commerce, we have an entire pot where there is like um, this knowledge hub, I would say. Plus we have like, um, I'm not finding the right word. Like overall, we have like a team that is providing with like research, with IT mm -hmm. things, like general things. And do you, um, do, do you see yourself at the top of this company do you see yourself having retired do you want to sell it i don't want to sell it that's mm. for sure mm. i'm i'm not i'm not going to sell it it's the same with you know i'm also passionate about finances and stocks um when i buy a stock why should i sell it when i make money with it doesn't, yeah, doesn't sure. make sense sure and when i build up an agency why why should i sell it there's no reason why to sell it um if I don't want to work so much, I get out of the company and let somebody else do it. But um, selling is out of question. Um, I see myself, of course, at one point to work a bit less, 
but not mm. now. Mm. I'm too young for this. But I have some plans because I started intentionally in a marketing agency because I said every business needs a marketing agency. So, for example, when I found set up a restaurant, I will need a marketing agency. Mm. So mm -hmm. that is already included. When I have other businesses which I want to do, like maybe. I don't know, my own gym. I have still the dream of my own gym. I need all the marketing for this. So, so there's still there's still a few more businesses inside of you to be made. Of course, of course. I love that. I really love that. Cool. Yeah. Well, um, we've been talking for ages, so I will uh, round that out. But it was really interesting to learn a bit more about you, Seb, and your journey. So that was really good fun. And I hope everybody who was listening got some insight in that as well. Um, you, you really surprised me today. I, I really <laughs> liked the session. <laughs> I didn't expect that. And I, I think we should do this not, not the next time because next time we have a guest, but maybe after that, we should do the same with you to learn about more about your journey of Harry Ropo, how you well, grew up and so on. I'd love to. I'd love to. Um, would you like to do the outro, Seb, this time around? I don't know what to say. Um, I hope you guys, you follow our YouTube um, channel. Um, for Harry, just go on imaginary space or follow on the links that are in YouTube. And for me, just look up RA7 Consulting Romania, and then you just go on Instagram or something, and then you will find me at one point as well. There we go. Very nice. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, it's goodbye from me and Sebastian this week, but it's been a blast. Thanks, Seb. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Harry. Bye-bye.